So is there any proof of reality shifting? Is there any kind of scientific evidence that shows without a doubt that it is true, it's real, and explains how to do it? The answer to this is actually going to surprise you. Yes, there is. And there's actually four specific experimental studies that I want to kind of dive into on this video. And that will show without a doubt there is proof that reality shifting is real. By the way, I do have another really long video, a really detailed video on YouTube showing you exactly how to reality shift all of the different techniques, the things you need to be, you know, thinking about, the warnings, the uh, hacks. The link to that is in the description. It also will be the pinned comment as well. So if you kind of don't know how to do it or you just want to refresh your memory, that's the best video to watch. OK, so go and check that out. So the first experiment that I want to kind of summarize a little bit here is the twin slit experiment. So what they did is they took kind of photons of light, particles of light, and they fired them towards a slit and then recorded them when they hit kind of like a backing, like a, you know, a backing sheet. And, uh, and what happened is when they first fired the particles towards the first, you know, the, the slit, they, the particles would enter the slit, hit the backing, and they would record the particles as normal when they hit the backing. Nothing, you know, nothing unusual, nothing out of the ordinary there. Then what they did is they added a second slit. So they fired the same, you know, beam of particles towards the two slits in this uh, like film and then recorded them when they hit the backing. And what they found is that the particles went through both slits at the same time. This can only be achieved by a wave, an energy wave. But we thought they were particles. So hold on a second. How have these particles transformed into a wave to go through both slits at the same time and then reformed into particles to hit the backing after the slits? There's literally no explanation for this in traditional physics other than that uh, particles can act like a wave or a particle depending on what and who is observing them. And this is a real, we'll come back to this later, this is a really important distinction. The uh, particles change into a wave as they were being observed, right, and then reformed into particles to, to hit the backing and be recorded. Very, very interesting thing. The next experiment is probably one that you're a bit more familiar with, and that is quantum entanglement. So what they did in this experiment, and there's been actually several experiments that kind of demonstrate this, but the main kind of basis of this is they would take a photon of light, split it into two pieces, and then separate the two pieces by a given distance. It can be, you know, 20 centimeters. Uh, in some experiments, it's a few hundred miles. The distance really doesn't matter, and I'll get back onto that in a second. But what they would do is they would split the two halves of this photon, and then they would do something to one of the halves, right? Let's say they excite it or um, create some kind of reaction in that part, half of the particle. And then the same effect is recorded instantaneously in the other half. De uh, regardless of the distance and time between the two particles, or the two halves of the particle, I should say. And again, there's no explanation for this in modern uh, traditional physics. There has to be something else going on. How on earth can you affect one thing and have the same effect instantly happen to the other half of that same particle, even if they're 200 miles away? There's literally no reason that that would work, no explanation that traditional physics can give us. There must be something else going on. And of course there is. And we should just remind ourselves that the effects that happen during that um, you know, quantum entanglement experiment happen regardless of distance, instantaneously, faster than the speed of light, like they already happen. You do something to one half of the particle, the other half of the particle already has the effect. In some experiments, they've even shown that it, it happens regardless of time. So what you do to one particle has already been done <laughs> to, the, to the other half of the particle, almost like it knew it was going to happen before you even did it. And it just gets weirder as well. And this is why a lot of um, contemporary, like traditional physicists refer to this stuff as quantum weirdness because they have literally no explanation for how and why this works or happens. They don't know. And they tell you they don't know. And to, to the point where a lot of physicists will actually refuse to discuss quantum mechanics because they simply have no idea how it works. And they it, to, to admit that, would also be admitting that the whole foundation of physics that you base your life's work around might not be true. Or, you know, it might be a small part of a much bigger picture. And that's a scary thing to admit for some people. So a lot of physicists won't even discuss quantum mechanics, even though, <laughs> this is the crazy thing, 
there are experiments like this one that have been done that clearly show beyond a shadow of doubt that these effects happen. They, even though the data is there, the data has already been collected, they don't want to discuss it, they don't want to know about it because it, it challenges their life's work. But you know, for people who don't really care about whether they're right or wrong, the data is out there and it's very interesting. There are two more studies that I'm going to tell you about right now which are mind-blowing. These are, you know, <laughs> these next two are more interesting than the last two. Um, but just wanted to remind you to go and watch my other video about reality shifting. The link is in the description. It's on YouTube. There's no catch. Okay, so it's almost like a webinar but on YouTube and it explains exactly how to shift the different techniques. It's really, really detailed and um, it's, I would say it's my best video like that shows you or teaches you how to shift and explains how and why it works. So go and check that out. The link is in the description. So experiment number three. Well, first I should backtrack a bit. First, what they did is they took, they, they created a vacuum, like a, a glass tube uh, with uh, nothing inside. They sucked all the air out. And all that was inside after this was photons of light. So they recorded the photons of light inside this vacuum tube, and they saw that the photons were kind of scattered around randomly, just like you'd expect, right? Nothing unusual. Then what they did is they introduced a tiny piece of human DNA inside the vacuum. And what they noticed then is that the kind of the, the light particles organized themselves into really beautiful and unusual patterns around the DNA. Now, before I go any further, that is absolutely mind blowing. That should not happen. According to traditional physics, there should be no, there's no um, effect that would explain why that happened. So that's already mind blowing as it is. What's even more interesting is that when they then took the uh, DNA out of the tube, the particles of the photons of light still remained in that formation. And again, there's no reason why they would do that. So it's pretty mind blowing. And uh, as the more we learn, it seems like DNA and emotions have an enormous, extraordinary effect on our reality, much more than we've been told and much more than traditional physics even knows about. Because the DNA is a powerful thing, and I've made other videos about this, especially on my other channel, Astro HQ, um, which explains you know why this is so powerful. But yeah, this experiment's pretty interesting. It's not as interesting as the next one, which is where things really get spicy. Okay, so in experiment number three, we explained how uh, human DNA was able to affect light photons in a vacuum and how that effect was able to stay there once they removed the DNA. By the way, this shouldn't even happen uh, at all, let alone the effect staying there after the DNA has been removed. Like these light photons should be scattered randomly. There's no physical reason, as far as we've been told by you know modern science, that those photons would do anything other than just be scattered about randomly. There's no interaction that, should, that would explain that, uh, especially in a vacuum. So, experiment, ex <laughs> experiment number four. And this is really probably my favorite experiment that I want to talk about in this video. So what they did, they took somebody's DNA, removed it from their body, and started to measure it electrically. So they would measure like the electrical impulses and things going on in that piece of DNA. They then stimulated an emotional response in the person they took the DNA from. So imagine like somebody's just taken a piece of my DNA, put it in a tube, uh, separated it from me, and then now they've started to emotionally stimulate me. Maybe they show me like a, an exciting video or a, a scary video, right? The piece of DNA electrically reacted to the emotions that the human was exhibiting. So I don't know how else to explain this. Like the, the piece of DNA that was separated from the guy had a measurable electrical reaction to the emotions that the guy was experiencing. There, that shouldn't happen. <laughs> I mean, it goes without saying, like the DNA is separated and technically dead or disconnected from the human and separated by several rooms, you know, like it was in a different room across the hallway. And yet when they stimulate the emotions of this guy, the DNA reacted instantaneously again. And this is an interesting point because like in the first experiment, these effects happen instantaneously. There's no time delay. There's nothing traveling to and from these things. There's no messenger, you know, being sent through the air to the DNA. It happens instantly with no time delay whatsoever. And what that shows is that there's nothing communicating back and forward. It's all connected. There's, no, there's nothing that needs to travel from the human to the DNA and back again because they're already connected. 
they're already the same thing. So what I find most interesting about this experiment is that the human was able to alter and change the DNA that was separated from him just by his emotions, by his feelings. And again, like with all four of these experiments, there is absolutely no explanation for why these effects should be happening according to traditional physics. But when you look at quantum mechanics and quantum entanglement, you the picture you get is that everything is connected so of course things like this make perfect sense because there's no separation between these things. There's no separation between me and a piece of my DNA that's been taken to another room. It could be in another room. It could even be on another planet. Like there's literally no, um, th the distance between the two things makes absolutely no difference. At least that's what the experiments have shown. You know, it could be 200 miles away. It could be right next to it. The fact is the, the human was able to alter the DNA using his emotions, regardless of distance. So what does that mean for shifting, right? Well, the, one of the first things it means is that it is possible because you're able to, if you're able to alter DNA 200 miles away instantaneously, just with your emotions, imagine what you could do, you know, in any other situation with anything else. You could heal yourself, you could reorganize and reform, you, you know, the structures in your body and mind in countless different ways let alone, you know, the reality outside of yourself, which is not really outside of yourself at all, as these experiments have clearly shown. So of course these experiments, you know, and there's more by the way, there's way more experiments that I can't go into in one video. Um, some books I would recommend reading are The Divine Matrix and The Holographic Universe. These books really do summarize a lot of studies on this stuff much better than I can in a simple YouTube video. Um, I'll try and put the links in the description. But what it shows is that everything is connected. These experiments all show the same thing. Everything's connected. Uh, you know, even the tiniest particle that we think is completely irrelevant is connected to every other particle. Time and space don't seem to matter whatsoever. There's no time delay. There's no, you know, the distance between the two things that are connected doesn't matter. A distance is essentially an illusion. And I think it was Einstein that said something like this. Um, yeah, so pretty interesting. What it also shows, what these experiments also show, is that emotion is the key to interacting with this kind of divine matrix and changing these things. It's the emotions. And this makes a lot of sense because when you generate an emotion, especially related, relating to the heart and the brain, the emotion creates a, a measurable electrical signal. Um, especially the emotion of coherence or love or synchronicity between the two hemispheres of the brain. I've spoken about this in other videos, um, the hemispheric synchronization that happens, especially when you listen to certain binaural beats, certain frequencies. And when you experience certain emotions like love or gratitude, these things kind of coherently synchronize the two hemispheres of the brain and generate a very powerful electrical signal. This is not just some woo-woo, you know, nonsense. This is measurable. You can attach electrodes to your brain and measure this stuff. The um, electrical torus field that your heart generates extends out six to eight feet around you in all directions. So when you have the, you know, emotion of love and gratitude, you send a physical signal out eight feet around you. And to be honest, it's probably way more than eight feet. Eight feet is probably like the default uh, radius that it goes, but like these experiments have shown, these connections happen, you know, even 200 miles away from somebody, even on another planet, these signals that um, bounce between the two places are not separated by distance and they're not separated by time. Anyway, yeah, that's, um, those are my four favorite studies on this stuff. There are more, like I said, in the holographic universe and in the divine matrix. These are very good books. I think you can get them on Amazon for a couple of bucks or something. The links will be in the description. Um, but please, if you are interested in reality shifting in general, I do have, like I said, a really long kind of webinar style video on YouTube. Click the link in the description or in the pinned comment there and go and check that out.